afternoon, dear students. Uh, my name is Dr. Shwaib Mohammed Bhatt. I'm working as assistant professor in the Department of English at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today in this video lecture, we shall be talking about listening comprehension. So we have talked about listening. We know what listening is. We talked about different stages of listening. The process of listening we talked about. Now today, we shall be talking about, we shall have a discussion on listening comprehension. Listening is a process of receiving, interpreting and reacting to the messages received from the communication sender. Now, first of all, it's pertinent to all of us to know what listening is. So we should stay in touch with listening because we are discussing listening comprehension in this lecture. So it's a process of receiving, interpreting and reacting to the messages received from the communication center. Listening occurs when there is a speaker, when there is a sender who speaks, who talks, who conveys something. Then only listening is possible. When we do not have listener or listeners, when we don't have any spoken material, so there cannot be the activity of listening cannot happen. So it is listening is to receive. First, we receive the information. Then we interpret that information. Interpreting means we are, uh, we are converting the message into the meanings. We try to understand the content of the content of that message. In what context context the message has been uh, the the words have been spoken. So, what is the literal and figurative meaning of the words? What is the author? What is the speaker speaking, which is beyond his words? This all we can we can do. This all is possible because of listening and we do this when we interpret the spoken words then reacting and as i told you when i was talking about communication uh, process there we talked about feedback and i told you one important thing that is every communication is impossible without feedback every communication is not impossible but i should say it's incomplete without feedback because it is your feedback, it is this receivers or listeners reaction, feedback, response, which lets a speaker or a writer know how far, how successful he or she is in delivering the message. So reacting, it comes in the listening. Listening is not only we are receiving the information, it is to receive and to understand to interpret and it is not only receiving and understanding or receiving and interpreting, uh, interpreting only it is receiving interpreting and reacting to that message to react to that message so that you can let your speaker know was he successful in delivering his message so that you can ask for further clarifications to your speaker so that you can ask the speaker to prolong that discussion in the next in the next talk. But this is receiving. It's not only uh, to receive the information only. So listening is to receive, to interpret, and to come in and to react to the to the speaker. Listening it involves identifying sounds of speech. It is identifying sounds of speech and processing them into words and sentences. So it is to identify the sounds. The listener at the first receives some sound waves. So these sound waves, they reach to the eardrums of the receiver, then they are converting, then they are taking to the nerve impulses, and then there they are converting into meanings. But the thin here is, we are talking about the overall process of listening. When we talk about the overall process of listening, the first thing is this. Listening means to identify the sounds because a lot of sounds are reaching to the listener. Then listener identifies the sounds. 
off of speech because right now I am talking to, I am delivering a lecture. So you people are identifying the sounds of my lecture. And then you are processing these sounds into words and sentences. There is a proper process, there is a proper channel. For now, see, human being or human mechanism is something different. God has endowed us with these qualities. It doesn't seem to us like the words which we listen, they reach for story or drums, then they are taken to the nerve impulses, then only we interpret them in meanings. We interpret their meaning. So it seems quite means impossible because when we listen, we do not feel, we do not sense that there is some process going on inside. Because this uh, process of listening is so fast, a man, a person cannot understand when the process is at action, when the process is going on inside, to when we receive, when, the, when, the, when a person receives sounds, identifies them into words and meanings. When these sounds reach to nerve impulses, then they are being converted into meaning. So it doesn't seem like as if something is happening like this. But as I told you, we are having a very balanced and dynamic mechanism God has given us. So it's happening with the process. It's not like that your ears heard something and it's understood. It is understood at this stage when we listen it, but a process, through a process. And that process, it goes with no time. It requires very less amount of time. So it's, in, it's identifying the sounds. It's identifying the sounds of speech and, and processing them into words and sounds. Then it's an active, purposeful process of making sense of what we hear. Now, listening is not like this. We give our ear to someone, some noise is coming to our ears and we are not responding. We are not, we are not just uh, reacting or we are not acting according to the speech. It's not that thing. Then what is it? It's an active process. It's a purposeful process. And this process lets you to make sense of what you hear. It's active because you are making sense of what you hear. It's active because you are acting according to the according to the directions which of the speech which you hear. For example, you are right now speaking to me. If I tell you, open your notebooks. And when you open your notebooks, that means listening process is happening. That means you people are listening to me. Because you are making sense of what you hear. And in this in this class. Where right now you are listening to me, if I tell you two and two makes four, two and two make four. So if you react to me, no, sir, you are wrong. It's five. Two and two are never four. It's five. Sorry, it's never five. It's four. Now, if I tell you two and two makes three, so you will react to me. You will respond to me. No, sir, you are wrong. It's not three, but it's four. 2 plus 2, it's always 4, it's never 3. So when you respond upon a mistake, when you rectify me, modify my statements, that means you are listening to me carefully. So it's an active process, a purposeful process of making sense of that, all that which you hear. So it's not like something is reaching to our ears and we are respond, we are not responding. No, it's not that thing. Then Listening skill can be defined as like listening. Uh, I would like to just take the help of uh, Thomilson. Thomilson is a person who, who wrote a lot of things about listening, about communication skill in general. Let's see what, his, what he speaks about listening. Listening skill can be defined as listening is the act of hearing attentively. He says it is an act of hearing attentively. Hearing is the first stage of listening. Hearing means when sounds reach to our ears, but we are not paying any attention. We are not paying any, any concentration. No attention is, when no attention is given to the heard stuff, that is hearing. But when we hear with concentration, when we hear attentively, when we hear with attention, that's listening. 
because we are paying attention because it's a deliberate process it's not like uh, it's not like uh, which is uh, which is uh, involuntary action no it's a voluntary action so listening is an act of hearing attentively listening means to hear attentively to pay attention to all the words which the speaker is speaking then it is also a process similar to reading we should possess the knowledge of phonology syntax semantics and text understandings it's it's like the study of uh, this reading because when we read we should have the understanding of phonology of phonetics of syntax sentence structure subject to verb agreement semantics we should have the knowledge of intonation we should have the knowledge of stress patterns and we should have the knowledge of text understanding how can we read a text carefully same is the case when it comes to listening listening is not like it comes to you by its own no there is a proper channel as i told you so there are proper stages of listening so listening is like reading it requires the knowledge of phonology if you are a listener and you do not have the you do not have the knowledge of phonetics so you do not know the exact pronunciation of words you cannot understand understand the speaker because you are not able to understand the words which he pronounces because your speaking is your pronunciation is weak so one should have the knowledge of syntax semantics very important one should know the intonation one should know different stress patterns why stress is being used in the sentence or sentences and one should have the understanding of the whole discourse how to interpret or how to understand an informative discourse an inquiry discourse a persuasive discourse or a persuasive talk how this is what uh, tomlinson says about listening let's go with the definition of listening comprehension let's go with the definition of listening listening comprehension so there have been different definitions of term listening comprehension i would like to take help of roast and hamota oh these are the influential people who wrote about communication skills particularly about listening skill they define listening comprehension as an interactive process in which the listeners are involved in the constructing meaning listening comprehension it is an interactive process it's an interactive mechanism it is a process where the listeners are interacting with the heard sounds with the speech which they hear so it is an interactive process where listeners are involved in constructing meaning where a listener indulges himself or herself in order to construct a meaning from different discourses or dialogues so listening comprehension is not like uh, like we listen and we we do not pay attention no it's an interactive mechanism when i speak interactive interaction requires concentration that requires attention when you interact with any new talk with new dialogue new concept new idea new opinion you need to be at very attentive you need to be very concentrated you should have your concentration on that dialogue then only you can understand the dialogue otherwise without giving proper attention proper concentration to any topic it is difficult to understand a topic it is difficult so it is an interactive process it is a process which requires attention concentration and what is the is this process about it is the process where listeners they involve themselves in constructing meaning where listeners are trying to construct a meaning from the spoken material listeners comprehend the oral oral input through sound discrimination previous knowledge grammatical structures stress and intonation and other linguistic or or non linguistic clues 
Now listeners can comprehend meaning. Listeners can get meaning while looking upon certain elements of the talk. One is sound discrimination. Second is previous knowledge. You are, you are, you are listening any topic, it's on climate change. You have some existing knowledge on climate change. So when you are speaking, when you are listening to the speaker who speaks on climate change, so you are inwardly, intrinsically, you are just comparing your existing knowledge with the speaker, with, with the knowledge of the speaker. So you construct the meaning with the help of your previous knowledge. When the speaker may be omitting some important information in the talk, but you get to know what he wants to speak because of that previous knowledge which you have. Then grammatical structures, we can easily understand or we can listen, we can extract the meaning, we can construct the meaning by analyzing grammatical structure of a dialogue of a talk. Because see, I'm speaking to you, if I, if I tell you I eat food, and at the same time, I tell you, I ate food. When I speak, I eat food, you get to know it's about present. When I speak to you, I ate food, you get to know it's about past. So when a speaker is speaking, obviously, he's mentioning the time many a times. He is mentioning many things which we can understand. He is mentioning many things because of these grammatical structures. So we cannot understand a dialogue when we are not aware of grammatic, if we are not aware of grammatical structures. Then we have stress and intonation. So one should also be aware of stress and intonation. Because there are certain statements where we lay stress. There are certain sentences where we have rising tone. There are certain sen sentences where we have falling tone. So these tones, they convey meaning. It's not like if I ask it to you like this, what's your name? So the tone in which the sentence goes up, so it has its meaning. Now if I tell you like this, what's your name? So this sentence and the earlier one has a lot of difference. It, they talk about different things. They show you at the same time, they show you the mood of the speaker. So stress and intonation one should know clearly in order to construct a meaning from a speech. And other linguistic or non-linguistic clues, one should be familiar with other linguistic or non-linguistic clues. Then I would like to take one more definition in board here. It's by Nadig. What Nadig uh, talks about listening comprehension. So listening comprehension if he defines listening comprehension as the various processes of understanding and making sense of spoken language. These are various processes of understanding. According to Nadig, it's not a single process, but different processes of understanding and making sense of spoken language. So according to Nadig, listening comprehension it means these are various processes of understanding a spoken language or making sense of a spoken language. It's one and the same thing to understand a spoken language. These involve, these different processes, they involve knowing speech sounds, comprehending the meaning of individual words and understanding the syntax of sentences. So according to Nadig, there are different processes which which listening comprehension requires in order to understand a language. And among these different processes, one process is knowing speech sounds. To know the speech sounds, phonetics. Second is comprehending the meaning of individual words. One should have good knowledge of words. One should have rich vocabulary so that one can understand the meaning of different words and ultimately one can understand a speech or a dialogue. Then, and understanding the syntax of sentences. And a person should also know the syntax of sentences. The subject-verb agreement, the structure of the sentences. 
these processes they allow a person when a person is good at these processes then he or she can go with listening comprehension with proper listening comprehension then so listening comprehension it encompasses the multiple processes which i told you which nadig also speaks that it is uh, it is the trade of many processes which are involved in understanding and making sense of spoken language many processes which we require in order to learn a language and these processes they include again like it is recognizing speech sounds it is understanding the meaning of individual words or understanding syntax of sentences in which they are presented so then see listening comprehension it can involve the prosody or its pronunciation is as like prosody and prosody so it is it can uh, listening uh, comprehension can also involve the prosody with which utterances are spoken now prosody see i would like to quote an example it's about the the rhythmic quality of a language which can be given by stress and intonation see there is an example prosody provides clues about attitude and, or affective state see we have a sentence ye that was a great movie this sentence can mean that the speaker liked the movie or the exact or the exact opposite ye that was a great movie it has two meanings one is i liked it that's why it is great or the second is it's not that great because i didn't like it now it depends on the speaker's intonation it depends upon the stress shift of the uh, of the speaker for example if you speak like this yay yeah, that this was a great movie so everybody can understand yeah you understood you you enjoyed the movie now you are like this yeah this was a great movie now oh, it doesn't make it make that that it doesn't give us that feeling yeah you liked it it seems yeah it's a contrary statement that means it's a paradox it contains a it's an ironical statement so it doesn't seem uh, that great movie by your words so oh, same is the case so listening comprehension as i told you it can involve prosody it can involve these ironical statements so where the utterances are spoken where the where the spoken material is intended to have one meaning but unfortunately it is being decoded in some other sense by the listener so listening comprehension it one should learn comprehension well one should be aware of stress shift stress pattern what is stress and intonation so otherwise there would be a faulty decoding of the message faulty listening of the of the of the speech or of the spoken uh, material so and making relevant inferences based on context real world knowledge and speaker specific attributes like what information the speaker has access and what he or she is likely uh, he or she is likely to be talking so this can these things can only be understood when a person is aware of all the processes of listening comprehension otherwise a person will not be able to decode the spoken material well because he is not when he is not aware of all these processes and this prosody it also it is also used to provide semantic information this intonation rising tone falling tone where to use rising tone why are we using rising tone with with certain sentences when we know that then only we can interpret the meaning of those sentences otherwise it would be opposite like the sentence which i gave you as an example so this is uh, these are the basic points about listening comprehension which we should keep in our mind now for longer stretches of language or discourse listening comprehension involves also involves significant memory demands to keep track of casual relationships expressed within the discourse now there are sometimes longer stretches of dialogues sometimes the speeches which is lengthier in nature its size is 
bigger size, a speech which is which is of which is of uh, enough length. So there, the listener's memory plays an active role. So one should have good memory in order to remember that long speech. So these are the important processes, important points which work for listening comprehension. Like it is recognizing the speech sounds, it's understanding the meaning of individual words, it's understanding the syntax, it's understanding the sentence structure, it is to understand the subject verb agreement and at the same time one should also be aware with the prosody, one should also be aware with stress and intonation and one should always have a good memory good so that he or she can have the track of records in his or her memory. Then reasons for listening. What are the different reasons for listening? See, uh, there are a lot of reasons for listening. But there are five main reasons for listening. There are five main reasons for listening, like to engage in social protocols, to exchange information, to enjoy yourself, to share emotions, and to exert control. This is said by H. There are many reasons for listening, but to H, there are five main reasons is to to, number one is to engage in social protocol. We should listen because we are social animals. We live in a society. So in order to maintain the social protocol, everybody should listen to the people. Second is to exchange information, to enjoy ourselves, to share emotions and to exert control. These are the five reasons uh, for listening according to Hedge. Now, Underwood and the person Underwood he expressed that teachers should prepare their students for the following situations. Means teachers should make this thing clear to the students that these are the reasons for listening. Like number one is attending a lesson. The purpose of this activity is to comprehend the major ideas to recognize the main information. So a student should be aware, a student should know that when I am attending a lesson, I have to comprehend the major ideas and to recognize the main information. So when a student is trying to comprehend the main ideas and is trying to recognize the main information, he, there are chances he may get or he may inculcate the habit of listening comprehension. Then listening to announcements and the reason is listening to announcements and listening to news and weather forecast where the main goal of the listener is to obtain pertinent information. The pertinent information can be achieved when we listen to announcements, to news broadcasters and weather forecast. Then listening to play, watching television or listening to a radio for entertainment. The objective of this activity is to amuse oneself. A teacher can train students or involve students in listening to different plays or over radio or watching television where they can listen something, listening to a radio for entertainment. So this process can also be the reason for the listening and this can also improve the listening comprehension. Now listening to someone delivering a speech and in this situation the listener is interested in opinions and attitudes of the speaker. So the next, next point according to Underwood is that is listening to someone delivering a speech. When someone delivers a speech, we should listen. Because the listener may attain, may get some opinions and attitudes of the speaker. Then following the instructions, the goal of the listener is to perform the function successfully. To follow the instructions, when we listen to follow certain instructions, the goal of the listener in this process is to perform the function successfully. Performance the five function successfully. Then, now how can we develop this listening comprehension? We come to know that listening comprehension means to listen carefully, to pay proper attention to all the uh, all the different processes like syntax, individual words, different things which I talk to you. Now, how can we develop this listening comprehension? See, listening comprehension, it begins at a young age as small children interact with people around them. 
It begins at a very young age. As these small children, they interact with people around them. It develops as they read, to, as they engage in conversation with parents and as they play games. So it develops as children, they engage in conversations, they read to books, they listen to their parents, they play games. So these things, this listening comprehension develops by listening. And in grad school, reading comprehension generally lags behind listening comprehension. We, uh, we offer more attention to the reading comprehension rather than listening comprehension. So the best way for a child to develop higher levels of comprehension is through the non-print sources. So in order to just uh, develop this comprehension in a very lucrative manner, in a very productive manner, so there are some sources which we can use. There are some non-print print sources like read alouds. It's better to read aloud. When you read aloud, when we read aloud, other people can, uh, they can, improve their or develop their listening comprehension. Then discussions, to take part in discussions, we listen. To, to watch movies, we listen dialogues and so on. But after a child learns to read, listening comprehension continues to be important. Reading is an activity or reading is a skill which you can learn within two or, two or three classes. How to read? We see, when a child reaches to first or second class, he or she reads quickly. So the, the, the activity to learn read stops there. Because now the reader is aware to read now. But when it comes to listening, there is no stoppage. So it is going to be important for all the times. There is no stoppage in the process of listening. Then there are some fantastic ways to develop listening comprehension. Number one is play fun games. One of the best way to develop listening comprehension is play fun games. Play listening skill games. One should play listening skill. There are games which can improve your listening skill like mashed potato. So this silly game will provide you your child with important listening practice and Plenty of giggles. So there is a game which we call as mashed potato, mashed potato, where more attention is given to listening skill. And there is another headbands. That's another great ga game that will help build listening skills in a way the whole family can enjoy. So if we indulge, if our learners indulge in these games, they can learn listening skill easily. Then. The next point is how can the next point to develop listening comprehension is talk to your child. If your child doesn't understand what words mean, comprehension is obviously that's impossible. When you do not understand what you are hearing, so how can you comprehend? How can you comprehend it? That's comprehension is not possible. The conversational method for teaching vocabulary is simply Talking to your child and expanding upon vocabulary words that he has not yet learned. So the conversational method of teaching vocabulary, it's simply talking to your child and expanding upon It's simply to talk to your child and expand upon the difficult words, vocabulary words. Means the words which he or she should learn, he or she should know. So when we do, if we want to improve or develop our listening comprehension, we should talk to the people. We should listen to people. Then we should make reading aloud and interactive. Unfortunately, reading habit is dying. Nobody is reading nowadays. We should read aloud and we should make it attractive. See, read lots of picture books aloud to your child. One should read a lot of books to the child, but don't just read. You can help your child's listening skill by turning reading into an interactive activity. As I told you, it should not only be reading, it should rather be an activity, interactive activity. How can we make our reading an interactive activity? Because 
we have to make reading an activity uh, reading an interactive activity in order to in order to develop the listening comprehension in our child see what we have to do we should briefly explain unfamiliar words and situations to help our child build comprehension we may encounter some unfamiliar word in reading or unfamiliar situation it is better to briefly explain it to the child so that he can build comprehension so that he can think about that thing then invite your child to make predictions like what do you think will happen next we should invite our child to make predictions because when we ask him to make a prediction prediction cannot be made unless and until we haven't learned or heard or understood the the previous the portion of the text so when we are making predictions it means we have understood the previous paragraph or previous chapter so it will again improve or develop the listening comprehension then encourage your child to retell the story on an exciting or an exciting part of story to the family members it's better to encourage our child to retell the same story to the family members so when we ask the child to retell so we can better get the proof of his or her listening comprehension because whatever he speaks we come to know about him, about the children about the child's listening comprehension meal times are often a good time for retelling stories it's better to ask a child to retell the story at the time of meals at the time of at lunch or dinner time because every family member is there and it will be an interactive activity then listen to audio books together in order to develop this listening comprehension it's better to listen audio books so listening to audio books is an is another great read aloud activity that provides number of opportunities for building listening skills when we listen audio books it's like that read aloud activity it's an interactive activity which provides us ample opportunities lot of opportunities to build our listening skills now as you listen to a story together react to the story laugh at the funny parts and express surprise or fear at the appropriate moments how can we make it an interactive interactive uh, this process it is like we should react we should react to the story like we should laugh at the funny parts of the story we should express surprise wherever we find something surprising and we should fear at the appropriate moments wherever there are, there is any dreadful situation so it is because of these points we can develop our listening comprehension or we can develop listening comprehension in a child then the goals of listening comprehension lessons what are the different goals of goals of uh, listening comprehension lessons i would like to take help of paulston and brother according to these two gentlemen listening comprehension lessons have certain goals these listening comprehension lessons they have certain goals and all teachers and learners should be aware of the goals it is both teacher and learner has to be aware of these goals like listening comprehension lessons should be carefully and gradually planned listening comprehension lessons they should be planned very carefully and gradually it's not like you are planning them in a very random manner no there should be the this careful planning and gradual planning for listening comprehension lessons and listening in uh, activities they progress from simple to more complex while listener gets in language proficiency listening uh, these uh, activities they progress from simple to complex more complex and the learner he or she gets language proficiency then listening comprehension lessons should demand active student uh, participation these listening skill activities or listening skill lessons 
they should demand active student participation because when you participate actively there are chances you can you can interpret the message clearly student participation is his her written answer to the listening comprehension material and immediate feedback on performance how can a student react or how can a student take part how can a student show his activeness uh, while listening he or she can write his or her answer to the listening comprehension material or can provide a immediate feedback on performance now that can keep students concern and motivation so student these lessons should made should demand active student participation it's not dull participation then listening comprehension lessons should provide a communicative necessity for remembering to develop concentration these lessons should provide a communicative necessity for remembering to develop concentration there should be this communicative necessity in order to remember or in order to develop concentration so these two factors are very important in recalling and can be done by giving the students the writing task before listening to the material so these things can be achieved these two things can be achieved by giving the students writing task before listening to the material then listening comprehension lessons should focus on conscious memory task they should focus on memory task conscious memory ta task and one of the aims of listening is to reinforce learners recall to increase their memory capacity so one of the main aims of listening is to strengthen receiving learners recall to increase this remembering power memory power it should increase that listening is a receiving receiving needs thinking listening is receiving and receiving needs thinking thinking needs memory so listening has a direct relation with the memory so listening comprehension is incomplete without memory without active memory the focus of listening comprehension lessons is on teaching not testing uh, is on teaching not testing listening comprehension lessons should focus on teaching but not testing the aim of checking learners response is is just feedback that's a way of helping learner to know how did they and how they are advancing the aim of checking learners response is what is the aim to check their response is just is 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 it's a kind of feedback Huh? That's a way of helping learners to know, which help learners to know how they did and how they are how they are advancing in listening comprehension. So this is uh, about listening comprehension. I talked about different things which I want to just recall once very quickly so that you can understand it quickly. You can keep the track of everything in your mind. First, I talked about listening. I gave you the important cracks of listening what listening is then i quoted thomelson i talked about the definition of thomelson then i talked about definition is there i talked about roast and hamoda what these two people speak about uh, listening then i talked about nadig uh, he talks about different processes of listening comprehension then i talked about uh, listening comprehension again then reasons for listening why should we listen what are the reasons of listening so then i talked about how listening comprehension develops what are the different ways by which we can develop listening comprehension and prior to that to that i showed you the i, I talked upon the importance of uh, this developing listening comprehension then i here in these uh, in in this uh there are different ways here i talked about different ways of developing listening comprehension there i talked about play fun games talk to your child make reading aloud and interact loud and interactive listening to audio books together then i talked about the goals of learning comprehension lessons there i talked about different goals 
So if you want to uh, just know anything more about listening comprehension, this is the record of books which I consulted in order to make this PPT, to make this video lecture. So I hope if you want some extra material, you can go with these books. So here I would like to thank you. Thank you for listening me carefully. Thank you once again. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.